Aha, good people of the isolator sphere, welcome. Yoroshku, willkommen. Hope you're okay. Hope you're bearing up. Hope you're eating well. Hope you're exercising and being kind to each other and in good spirits. I think I am. And <laughs> I missed you too. It's been, this is show number 15. and. We went bang, 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 didn't we? And then took a break, took a little break and uh, back for three now. Three more bang, bang, bangs. And it's really, really good to see you and be back with you. Because it feels, I can feel you out there. I can feel you, even, even though I haven't checked. I know you're there. First few shows I thought, <laughs> nobody's here, I'm talking to myself. But I could feel that you're here. So, um, I'm strapped up with a little baby, Toys R Us, $9.99. <laughs> it's the uh, the curved soprano saxophone. Soprano is normally straight, mine's bent. And this is, um, you're probably not old enough, but uh, years and years ago, <laughs> I worked with them so long, it was almost like a day job, a band called M People. It was a, it was a 20 year innings and uh, I was a, it was pretty busy in the night through the nineties. We were touring hard, proper hard, and uh, so this is the this is a little beastie that was responsible for um, this that little intro theme on Search for the Hero. You remember that? Yeah, we played that all around the world. The soprano sax. So I was just going to do a couple of a uh, couple of little tunes. One of mine, 
and then one of somebody else's. In fact, it's uh, the second one is written by a guy called King Curtis. His real name was Curtis Oosley. He's a saxophone player from Austin in Texas. Absolutely my hero. So this is my Shiro Sunset. And I'll have a quick <sighs> breath of air and then uh, go into the melancholy serenade. Here we go. Oh, I know, I make it look like hard work, don't I? Huffing and puffing, and you can probably hear the, the grunts. This is quite unusual for a sax to be played entirely on its own. A cappella. And uh, so you can hear all the breaths and all the grunts. And you can see how knackered I get, because I never get a break, because there's <laughs> never anybody else to take over. Well, a couple of times tonight there will be, because I've got a couple of mates dropping in tonight, I hope. And... Uh, you know, my faithful followers, who some of you have been with me for, this is your 15th show, and of course, you know, we're in strange times, and every night we we thank the folks that are looking after us, and the, the NHS people at the front line, the care workers, the key workers, and uh, tonight, a little bit special, because I remember, I don't know if any of you remember who we were there the very first night, somebody requested the theme tune to Jimmy's. Now, I played on that, and I don't know if they knew or not. I can't remember who it was, but I hope you're there. I hope you're out there, whoever it was. And uh, so I put it on the request list, which is actually getting quite long now. That's good. That's healthy, even though it makes me work. And uh, I thought, okay, I wonder if we could do something special with that. Rather than me just play the tune, um, I wouldn't have been able to find a backing track. And uh, because... Now, you guys have heard me talk about Ernie Wood quite a bit because he plays a lot on the on the new album that I've been 
raving on about because it's my new baby. It only came out last week and he's on four tracks. And so you've heard him and heard about him, but not that much. And you've never seen him, but tonight I'm hoping he's going to drop in. Because that, um, you know, that theme music for Jimmy's that was first heard over 30 years ago. Yorkshire Television at the time was making a new kind of program for ITV, a documentary serial. It was really, it was the very first docu-soap. Been loads now, haven't they? So here was the local TV station covering everything that went on in their local hospital. And of course, it was going to need a great theme tune. And uh, one of the researchers at the time there, Mandy, she put up the idea of using this local guy, local musician, already a doing a fair bit of media composing, you know, and getting his foot through the door and getting a name for himself, Mr. Ernie Wood, asking him to write it. And that turned out to be a, a great choice. And uh, you know, he called me, I popped around with my saxon flute, and uh, we knocked out the tune. And, uh, and that, that theme tune helped um, make the program a success for the next 10 years. Making Jimmy's the most famous hospital in the country. Jimmy's is in Leeds, of course, St. James Hospital in Leeds, Hare Hills, I think. There are no film crews at the hospital today, of course. In fact, no visitors are permitted at all. It's, uh, it's on the front line treating patients and uh, holding back the spread of the virus. So I'm in touch with Ernie a lot during the album and, you know, we're, it's never a year goes by when we don't chat or do a little job together, but Recently, probably more than ever. So um, I said, Ernie, I've got this idea. How about we kind of recreate the theme and you drop in virtually and we play it? And it didn't take too much persuading. So um, he sat down at the piano up at his gaff in, uh, over in North Yorkshire, wrong side of the bridge. And I sat down here in my shed at the bottom of the garden in North Lincolnshire. And we both worked out the tune and... Uh, that was quite quite a spooky thing, really, and it really brings home the power of music. Thirty years kind of gone like that. I mean, I haven't heard it for twenty years. I haven't played it for thirty years, but it comes back quick, you know, and quite shivery, really. Just even the little fills and things, and music has that power to take you to a time and place. And uh, so, uh, and then with a bit of jiggery pokery and Super Joe on the job with the technical stuff. We think we're going to be able to get him to drop in and we're going to play the piece together. And, uh, you know, I hope some of you NHS guys might be out there. I know a lot of you will still be working, but honestly, man, this is for you. And uh, so let me see if I can rustle the boy up. Mr. Ernie Wood. Are you there, mate? Are you there? Hey! <laughs> Fantastic. There he goes. Awesome. Mate. Let's do this thing. <laughs>
wicked <laughs> absolutely brilliant oh i'm shivering i really am shivering thank you ernie and uh Thank you, Jimmy's people. Thank you, NHS people, frontline workers, delivery drivers, key workers, care workers, wherever you are, man. And uh, and thanks to Nick Gray who helped give us some of that background as well. He was the director of that series. Oh, oh, I'll put this down. I need to lie down now. Ah, awesome. Let me have a quick look, see if anybody's there. The three finger swipe. Missed it. Oh. Aha! Loads of you. My face falls. Hey, Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy the plasterer. <laughs> oh, man, fantastic. Jimmy works in Scunthorpe Hospital, but he's Jimmy. Awesome. Craig is back, blowing his horn. Karen's back. Happy skier, fantastic. Oh, <laughs> Nikki, baby. Oh, Zena and Mick, you up and running? Absolutely awesome. Hi, Angie. Hi, Eva. <laughs> this is amazing. You're all popping up there. And the bit of the les I missed up above. Yeah. Oh, welcome back, guys. Really, really good to see you. Now, I was wondering while I've got the flute all warmed up. Ah, yeah, good point. Super Joe's telling me they haven't switched screen. I would be nowhere without my boy. I can't call him Techie Joe anymore. You know what? He's 16. He's absolutely gutted about the hairdressing situation. <laughs> and uh, his hair, he's like a caveman now. His hair's halfway down his back. Found a grey one. Joe Grey Hair. His name is Joe Hair. Yeah, I got the message, mate. Um, so, and also, I don't know if any of you lot have got kids, but um, <laughs> feels like they've been off school for about six weeks now. It's probably only three. So, um, you know, I've changed my name to um, Slave Davis. I'm up and down them stairs, man, with cups of tea and snacks and oh, like a donkey. Keeps me fit, I guess. So, while I've got the flute warmed up in my hands, I thought, um, if you ever enjoyed the little duet I did with Simon Goulding the other day, the one and only. Um, oh yeah, and also I'm just I'm rewinding now. I'm rewinding back to Jimmy's and just thinking about that. I was all <laughs> I was all emotional, <laughs> uh, flipping it, getting um. Getting early with me and all that. It's, uh, you, you plan these things, you just don't know. But I mean, honestly, it's great. There's so, such a appreciation of of you NHS guys now, and everybody coming out and battering the pans on Thursday at eight o'clock. Should be every day. Um, I'm just praying. I'm sure you, you all are that. You know when it's when it's over that. Um, those flipping politicians don't airbrush you out of the picture and forget about you. We won't let them, will we? We won't let them. No. Oh dear. Yeah, fantastic. Search for the hero. So, I'm all over the place. So Simon Goulding is going to drop in again with a bit of luck. Come on, Super Joe, we can do it. And uh, this is a piece that he recorded recently on his album which is a flipping triple album get him and uh, it's called mambo in so let's see if mr simon goulding is in the house yeah there he is brilliant okay mate you're there hmm. <laughs> Thank you. 
Simon. <laughs> Lovely stuff, mate. Lovely stuff. Oh, that boy. That boy is prodigiously talented and has more, more chops and technique in his foot than I do in my old body. Oh, dear. He can play. Just needs a few more lessons and a bit of confidence and you'll be all right. Oh, fantastic. And, uh, Talking to Simon earlier on, prepping, um, mentioned that it was his wife's birthday today, so happy birthday, Mercedes. And that just made me think again about all the folks out there with birthdays and anniversaries and special occasions that can't be shared with friends and families except over the, f over the phone. So uh, thank goodness for the phone and the internet, but, you know, happy birthday and happy anniversary everybody and uh, everybody who should have been celebrating this weekend well you're still celebrating aren't you we're learning the art of um, socializing virtually well, we're learning lots of different arts but so far not hairdressing because joe won't let me near him but um might be getting closer i've got my clippers oiled and ready and uh I want to shout out to Yvonne Driffield as well. And uh, <coughs> oh, maybe we should have a couple of haikus. Um, if you're new to the, the snaky stream, um, Duncan, the sax mad dentist, sax mad dentist, he, he uh, threw out a challenge to um, to the audience to come up with some snaky themed haikus. Uh, I started it kind of because. I'm really into my haikus. I'm learning Japanese. I'm, I'm still pretty rubbish, but so I do enjoy a bit of a haiku. And um, Matsuo Basho, he's the he's the the governor. A couple of centuries old. He was knocking them out. I don't know, kind of one a day or something. He's zillions of haikus, and they're they're beautiful. I really got into them and the little stories behind them. So then Duncan threw out the challenge. So there's a couple in today, more than a couple. And uh, 
Rod Mason, no, Rod Watson. Rod Mason's a sax player from uh, Lancashire. Rod Watson sent us um, beautiful, we've had some lovely, lovely messages from you guys. And well, this one was really heartwarming. And he said, uh, I've written a haiku about waiting for snake streamings inspired by, I don't know if any of you have been here right from the beginning. There's some footage of the outside of, of the studio. And uh, so he said, um, he was inspired by the on-screen picture of the studio garden. And uh, this is his first ever haiku. And like other people, he's had to look up how to do them. It's like, you know, they're in three lines. It's five syllables, seven, then five. But, um, and it doesn't need to be the last. He's promising it's the last. That's typical British modesty, isn't it? Um, he said, I don't want to do any lasting damage to Japanese culture. No chance of that, mate. They're a very warm nation. They would welcome your haiku attempts. And uh, so he's hoping that myself and Joe and Sally will enjoy it as an expression of thanks from himself and Anita, who are so grateful to us all for helping us through this tough period and for helping us count our blessings, amongst which we count these great stream concerts that are. It's worth getting out of bed and stitching it all together and getting the rubber bands around the camera and the sticky tape on the cables. But we really appreciate that. And I appreciate you guys being here as well because it's an enabling me to... I mean, I'd keep playing anyway, but when you're not playing to people, the music just doesn't feel so real. So it's great. Love it. So here we go. It's called Anticipation. So there he is waiting. Um, trees sway in the wind. Evening light begins to fade. The studio waits. Oh, I love that one. And then Annie Lane from Cornwall, she did one. Um, alto tenor bass. Spellbound snaky saxophone. Slivers through the soul. Ah. Oh. Oh. And uh, Annie, I hope, I hope you're there. And you were saying you, you had a better line if you could have used eight syllables but honestly we don't have to you know it's a bit like music there's no there's no rules you know so um eight syllables would have been fine so i need that line um in fact, i've got an example there's one here that by the great man himself mr basho and uh, and his syllables don't don't match i'll read it to you um yoshino nite Sakura Mishutsu Hinokigasa, which means, here we are in Yoshino, so let us look at the cherry blossoms, my pine bark hat. I don't quite get that last line, I think my Japanese is not good enough. I think there probably is a better translation out there. But anyway, that middle line, Sakura Mishutsu, it's only six syllables, so there you go. If Mr. Banana... Is that Basho means banana. If Basho can do it, hey, anything goes. And uh, I also thought I'd read that because, uh, same again, honestly, I'm not feeling sorry for myself in any way, shape or form, but as a few of you have missed special things and I should have been in Japan this week, would have been flying home today and would have been seeing those cherry blossoms. Not in Yoshino, but in some nice places. But... Hey, the cherry blossoms are coming out in my village. So <laughs> that's some consolation. They're beautiful. I used to live just off Cherry Lane, so called because of the, the trees. So absolutely fantastic. Thank you for those haikus. I had some more, but I can't find them. Um, should have another tune, shouldn't we? No, I'll tell you what. I'm going to see if you've got questions or haikus or. Oh, it's loads. Oh. Uh, you, you're doing that thing, you're chatting to each other. It's fantastic, answering each other's questions. Paul said he was playing over the rainbow last night. Because of the rainbow time. Oh, Letty, darling, my girl. Are you all right? <laughs> my daughter in London. Are you isolating happily? Oh. 
There's loads of you. Anybody who's anybody's there. Brilliant. More chops than our butchers. <laughs> That's for me and the sax player around the corner. And Ron saying, well done, Joe. Ah, oh, fantastic. There's a cast of thousands. You're all really, 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 really welcome. <laughs> okay. Catcher 250. Ah, oh, Mr. Sinandova. We'll be back. <laughs> Simon's watching in. You having a nice birthday dinner? I hope so. I feel another tune coming on. Um, half an hour in, I have not picked up the tenor saxophone yet. Oh, got to put that right. And uh, that should remind me whoever just mentioned Over the Rainbow, because it's been the rainbow week, hasn't it? That wasn't on my list. But hey, I should play a chorus of Over the Rainbow and then something else. That's what I'll do. Yeah. And then we'll talk about porridge or newts or something. You know, things that are dear to my heart. Swing you on. Put your drink down. <laughs> oh, drink flicking. Yeah. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Oh, my end went wrong. <laughs> you okay? That reed feels a little bit funny. That little bit of cane in the, in the mouthpiece there. That makes so much difference. Much more than having a posh, expensive sax versus a just a regular one. If that is wrong, you're knackered. So, my newts are back. I think that, well, I know that the heat, they love a bit of sun, so I thought they'd done one. I thought they'd hopped off to somebody else's pond. But they're back, loads of them. In fact, I've got a picture of one somewhere. Isaac, the great crested. Um, where is he? Here he is. You see that? He's my, <laughs> he's my favourite. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I sound ridiculous. I wish I hadn't started this. And uh, I talk to them, you know. I talk to the, I talk to the newts, and I talk to the frogs. I mean, probably a lot more lately now that we're banged up in the house. So I've got a, a little pond just just out there outside the studio. And I noticed just today. I noticed this that um, I call the newts darling. I call the frogs mate. I say, hello, darling. And then the frogs, I see them more in the evening because that's when frogs are hopping around in it. One often, it's almost like he's guarding guarding the gate. He's out there. And I always go, all right, mate. <laughs> How you do? Oh, so ridiculous. I wonder what they think of me. I think I'm an absolute idiot. Especially when I've got my head over the water looking to see if I can see one. I must be looking up and going, <laughs> that flipping idiot is back again, gazing into our pond. Um, why did I start telling you about the newts? Well, because they're important, aren't they? The animals are important. I'm sure they are to you, because you, you guys are music lovers, and music lovers have heart and soul. But they're not to everybody, are they? And uh, you know, when you actually find that out, it's quite a shock that down in the Buckingham studio when I lived there. Um, a new lady lived, moved moved in next door. And it was, the, it was the same there. I don't want you guys to think I live in a big rock star house. I don't. It's very, very modest. But I go for long back gardens so I can put my shed on the bottom and make a load of racket without anybody complaining. So I had my long garden there as well and, and um, the studio at the bottom. And it was, it was really idyllic, you know, and even though it was, it was in the town, it backed onto woodland. And um, so, so this new lady moved moved in, Barbara, and I wanted to make friends as you do. And I said, oh, you know, welcome, blah, blah, blah. So it's oh, fantastic. Just that bit of woodland outside the back fence. Where at the moment, there's um, a monk jack and it's got a young one. And I thought she'd be absolutely delighted to hear this. And she went, oh, she said, oh, my dogs won't like that. <laughs> I was heartbroken. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. Takes all sorts. And uh, it's great. <laughs> You've been sending me messages about reeds and about what the animals in your garden and everything. And but I've got a bit of it, animal envy because Steve, is it Shersby your second name, Steve? Anyway, from uh, New York. He sent me a couple of pictures, and one was of um of his woodpecker pecking away at his peanuts. Woodpecker pecking peanuts. That's quite a it's a tongue twister, isn't it? And. Uh, and that was bad enough, and then he, he's got a hedgehog as well, a hungry hedgehog. So uh, I want one. <laughs> uh, I've always had this fascination for my, my first, my first sort of, not proper job, but my first job where I earned any money was working on the cruise boats. And uh, we sailed out of uh, Puerto Rico for uh, 18 months or something, doing the Caribbean once, and then we... It was fantastic. We did a positioning cruise through the big canal, what it's called, whatever it's called, Panama, Suez, I don't know, that takes you to the west coast of America and then up the coast and sailed out of Vancouver to Alaska for three months, which was really wonderful. And uh, I used to just hang over the back deck looking for whales, not the country. Stupid joke, that one. And a uh, number of times that I thought I saw one, but it was actually just a... A whale-shaped wave, usually. <laughs> and it's so long ago, 
I'm not even going to tell you how long. I can't remember if I actually did. I did see one, yeah. I did see one. Anyway. <laughs> oh, dear. We had grass snakes as well living close to the house in Buckingham. Not that one, but the house I was in before. You don't need to know this, do you? And uh, I suppose I don't love them all. I'm not that keen on wasps and rats, but... And uh, Sally told me off the other day because um, I escorted a mosquito out of the house instead of killing it. Oh, they've got a right to live, haven't they, I suppose? I think it's time for a, one more tune because it's a long one. And then and then say our goodbyes and, and kind of leave you to it. Um, I'll have another quick look and see if anybody's still here. My three-finger swipe. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh, there's millions of you. Oh, ask him what the secret is to the technology. You'll have to ask Super Joe about that. Mr. Joseph, Herbert, Hutchinson, Davis. Oh, I accidentally hid somebody. I didn't mean to do that. My fingers go all over the place. I don't know how to unhide you, Jan. But I know you're there. <laughs> oh, Midge <laughs> sent me a picture of a is it an iguana. I heard a joke about an iguana the other day. Oh, what was it? Oh, oh dear, I can't remember. What's a reptile's favourite recreational drug? Mariguana. <laughs> Oh, it's terrible. I wish I hadn't remembered it. <laughs> Puffing Billy. Oh, Puffing Billy. <laughs> oh, people are coming out of the woodwork. It's absolutely amazing. Oh, you're all so welcome. And um, Can you come back tomorrow at 7 o'clock? And can you come back on Sunday at 7 o'clock? I'll have a bouncy one tomorrow with some party music and then we'll have a really relaxed, relaxed chilled one on the Sunday. 7 o'clock each night. And the uh, sax players out there, we're going to have another workshop at 11 o'clock in the morning on Sunday. Spread the word, please. We're just a little cottage industry, me and Sally and Joe, and we haven't got any promotion or management. So it's the same as the actual gigs that we have to drive to. You know, it's, we only exist by people recommending us and telling their friends to tune in and watch the old snake. He talks a lot of rubbish, but he plays some good tunes, something like that. I'm telling you what to say. <laughs> you can say what you want, for goodness sake. And uh, But I'll see you before I go. And uh, once again, thank you, Ernie. Thank you, Simon, my special guests. Thank you, Nick Gray. And thank you, all Jimmy's people. And thank you, all heroic saviours of us, mere mortals. <sighs> you rock. Um, what I thought I'd like to do is a tune that I haven't done for absolutely a gazillion years and this time I've only got musicians with me kind of double virtually because I've picked a backing track from an album that we made taking the sax off so I can play the sax live for you and uh, um, I'll dedicate this one to Phil and Kath because Phil recorded this and the boys in the band uh Neil Fairclough on the bass, Brian Hargreaves on the drums, and the wonderful Paul Birchall on the keyboards. And uh, what an emotional day this was, recording this album. And uh, this is a tune by Prince that you'll, you'll all know. I haven't played it for many, many years. I don't know why my voice is going up at the end. I suppose because I'm a bit nervous because anything could happen and... and oh no! It won't. If I make, if I play a few things, not quite as I meant to, does it really matter? Part of the art of being a musician is getting away with it and smiling through your mistakes. Um, and it's got a real purple rain. It's got a massive rousing chorus. So you must absolutely promise to sing along. Don't leave me on my own like a turkey. Let's sing. Let's raise our voices in this chorus. Let's make it a celebration and uh, enjoy it. Well, I've got one more fader to move. 
I also blast you with this tennis sax. Purple rain.
Oh, good job I left out to lost. I heard you. I heard, I'm sure I heard you. I heard Ian and Nicky because they're just a few doors down. Didn't quite hear Letty, but I knew you were singing. Oh, fantastic. I enjoyed your company. I enjoyed playing for you. <sighs> so thank you so much. Come back tomorrow if you can. And uh, just, you just say nice things. You're not asking me anything. So, ah, oh, somebody's saying they love the CD, so that's brilliant. That allows me <laughs> the opportunity to not sound completely, uh, what's the word? Horrible. No, blatantly opportunistic for just mentioning that the CD is the new baby and it's available from our website to, for a hard physical copy or a download. It took ages getting those downloads up there, so get them down. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody. Stay in touch. Spread the word. Baby, see you tomorrow. That would be absolutely brilliant. Thank you for your company. Take care of each other. Be kind. Be patient. We'll be fine. <laughs>